coffee? Check. Mm hmm. Kitty. Mm. Kitty, check. And we're good to go. All right. So many of you guys have been waiting for another Brian video, and I know exactly what you're thinking. Seriously, Peter. We waited this long for you to talk about the one-two string. Now, I know what you're thinking. Peter, I know how to use this string. This shit's basic as hell. Come on, bro. Is it really? Is it really, bro? Because I can guarantee you that at least I can enlighten you just a little bit about this string if you watch to the end. Because there are some mistakes that you guys are making. And there are some ways that this string can be extremely powerful. Well, with that, let's cut the chit chat. Roll that fucking intro, Crossroads. Roll that fucking intro. <laughs> Hello, I'm Peter, and welcome to a Tekken guide on Brian Fury. Now, it's been a little while since I made a guide on Brian, so I wanted to get back to basics with him. After watching some beginners play Brian and even some intermediates, I realized one particular string is overly abused in more or less the same pattern, right? And it's the 1 2 string. For those of you beginners watching this intermediate guide, and even some intermediates who are watching this guide, um, I guarantee you you're making some mistakes with this string without even realizing it, right? So uh, I just want to preface by saying if you are a beginner, um, I do have a beginner playlist for Brian. You can check that out. Uh, this video is uh, probably geared a little bit more towards the intermediates, but hey, you can check this out still nonetheless. Um, and I guarantee you, if you watch all the way to the end, there's some really good snippets of knowledge and great little things that I have in store for you. Now, we're going to cover what makes the 1-2 string so powerful, how to properly utilize it, and how to mix it up to better open up your opponent when pressuring. As a reminder, if you enjoy Tekken related things and being entertained, consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, and getting the latest and greatest on all the new content that I have to offer you. With that, let's get started. The mistake. All right, all right, all right. A lot of beginners make their first mistake regarding Brian's pressure with this string series. And this this habit carries over to the intermediate level as well. As a result, many players just throw the string out there haphazardly, hoping something sticks. For starters, beginners always gravitate towards one, two, three. This is two high attacks that jail, followed by a moderately fast low. New players do this all the time to keep pressure on their opponents, to get some damage, and are rarely punished. It's a bad habit, and as soon as those players graduate from the green ranks and get to the deeper into the yellow ranks, I would say, this habit becomes a huge liability. More seasoned opponents start to low parry this string and really just make Brian players eat shit. Now, Brian players then, they go through this phase where they're thinking, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. one, two, one, or one, two, three, isn't a great string. So I'll stick to 1-2-1, one, one, since it ends in a mid and will catch ducking opponents. And 1-2-1, one, one, lo and behold, works for a few ranks. But eventually, somewhere around the orange ranks, I want to say, opponents stop ducking and stop running into 1-2-1 one, one anymore. They just block it. And then the Brian players are left kind of scratching their heads, uh, thinking, this string is such a bad mix-up tool. It just either puts me at minus six on block, losing my turn, or I throw out one, two, three, and then get low parried, and then lose a ton of my health. What is the purpose of the string? A 
Understanding the string. All right. The big misconception about the 1-2 string series is that its mix-up potential is solely based around the two enders. Because as soon as you do the enders, the mix-up is over. 1-2-1 one, one is minus 6 on block, and 1-2-3 is low parryable or minus 12 on block. Don't get me wrong, the 1-2 string series is a mix-up tool. It absolutely is, but not necessarily only in the traditional sense of a 50-50. And I urge you to think about the 1-2 string series as more than just that, right? More than simply a mid or low mix-up, 50-50 mix-up, right? With the ending attack. Broaden the possibilities. Is Brian going to do 1-2-1? Is he going to do 1-2-3? Or just one two, or perhaps he does uh, one two followed by something else entirely, right? Thinking over these possibilities can make our opponents hesitate, letting our attacks land more frequently. Remember the idea of mind games with pressure in the beginning, uh, the beginner Brian uh, videos on pressure. Remember those? Flashback. Due to his unorthodox pressure game, pressuring with Brian requires two main. Why am I doing this? Two main things, all right? One, it's gonna require mind games. And two, it's gonna require commitment. Mind games. Mind game comes in the form of whether or not strings are finished. Utilizing one, two. So, how do we utilize this mix-up? When should we go for which option? I got you covered. It may be harder than you think to implement what I'm about to say because, well, you have pre-established habits and tendencies. And you'll need to break these, and that honestly is the hardest part about utilizing 1-2. The 1-2 jab series should be your go-to option when trying to assess the opponent and figure out their tendencies. Say we're starting round one against uh, an unknown opponent. We have no information on them, we don't know if they press buttons immediately after we press buttons, or if they'll just be content on blocking. And this is the role of 1-2 jab series to collect data and information, a, uh, a scouting tool, if you will. Remember, scouting tool. After you do one, two jab, you can simply backdash out. Or, if you so desire, you can also sidestep. No need to commit to any buttons, really. Just one, two, and move. Now, let's go back to round one again. Round one, we just started. Uh, we throw out one, two, and backdash. After our opponent blocks our jab series, we need to ask ourselves, what did they do? What did they do? We look for four types of reactions. One, immediate button press. Two, crouching. Three, stand guarding. And four, delayed button press. Once now we get an idea of the opponent's habits, we can then determine the next course of action that we want to take. If we're unsure, just throw out the 1-2 again to see. There's no danger really in trying to confirm or just check again because 1-2 comes out very quickly, it does jail, and your opponent really has to be looking for it in order to while standing punish it. And after all, this the string is completely safe on block, right? So don't just dial in one two one at the start of the round or one two three at the start of the round. Look for your opponent's habits first with one two, scout it out, and then that's when we start to try to implement other things. Utilizing one two one and one two three. So now that we've assessed the opponent's habits with 1-2, we can start to choose the different enders. 
against opponents who like to press buttons or duck, 1 2 1 will be our biggest friend here. If we catch a ducking opponent anticipating 1 2 3, the low, we can net a solid 18 points of damage and plus 6 frames on normal hit with 1 2 1, allowing us a free forward 3 check. Make sure to delay the last hit of 1 2 1 every now and then as this changes up timing and can create some interesting mind games with the delay. Against opponents who just like to, to stand guard, try to backdash or whichever after 1-2, we can go for 1-2-3 to sneak in some little bits of damage and get a 2 frame advantage. Nothing major, just a little bit. Needless to say that the last hit of both of these strings counter hit Button happy opponents. 1 2 1 nets you a full combo on counter hit, while 1 2 3 nets you just a free micro dash up soccer kick on counter hit. While this might seem trivial and you might be going, duh, of course, I know this shit already, Peter. There isn't anything new to me here. However, uh, over and over again, I see lots of brines just dialing in 1 2 1 and 1 2 3 with no clear game plan or understanding of the opponent. Stay tuned for the next section as it's where things are going to get interesting. Utilizing 1 2 4. Actually, I lied. That's right. I lied. I will get into how to effectively utilize the 1 2 string as offense, but I wanted to make a mention of 1 2 4, uh, this string, as it's very rarely seen as a string and there's good reason for it. And I realize I I don't think I've talked about this string at all, in fact, and it's not even in my Brian top 20 moves, and there's, there's good reason for that. Brian's 1 2 4 string has two very 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 specific purposes listed in no particular order the first reason to use one two four is as a 10 frame counter hit tool if the one or the two connects as a counter hit then the four is guaranteed to land use this if you have an idea that the opponent has a habit of pressing a button and you can counter hit them with one two for a 10 frame counter hit Think of this as Brian's equivalent to Fang's back one or Jack's forward two, but not as good. The second reason to use this is to catch opponents who are sidestepping left after one two. And you might be asking, Peter, why, Peter, why would anyone want to sidestep left after one two? I mean, Brian's strong side is his left side, so. Why would anybody want to sidestep after 1-2? Well, normally 1-2-1 one, one cannot be sidestep left or sidewalk left. However, if 1-2-1 one, one is delayed, the opponent can sidestep left or sidewalk left the last punch and punish. To counter this, the 4 and 1-2-4 one, will halt the sideways movement in that direction. Similar to 1-2-3 and this is important. 124 should not be abused because it can be ducked and launch punished. The last hit is a high, so opponents who are looking out for 123 can actually simultaneously duck 124. All right? So if they duck, it's a 2 for 1. They can get they can block 123 and also get 124. Additionally, while this attack may look like mock kick, make no mistake, this is no mock kick. It tracks reasonably well to sidestep left and sidewalk left, but it's actually steppable to sidestep right and sidewalk right. Not only can it be ducked and punished, it can also be stepped and punished. And the last point uh, is that this attack is not a natural string by any means. Even if you hit 1 2 on hit, the opponent still can duck the 4 and launch punish you. So use 124 for very specific purposes, but generally I want to say stay away from this string. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we finally arrived at the one-two pressure. Okay, to open up the full potential, the box, if you will, of the one-two string beyond the two standard extensions that we know, we must make sure our opponent respects the last hit of the one-two string. Usually, this can be achieved by finishing one-two-one string a few times so that the opponent is used to seeing the string completed. Next, we want to ensure that the opponent is not ducking constantly. Since 1-2 can be ducked and launch punished, this is important to keep in mind. So, during your normal attacks, make sure to use plenty of mid-hitting attacks to keep the opponent standing. Now that we have the parameters established, we can go into the various options of using 1-2 as an offensive pressure tool. First option, standing 4. Once the opponent has been conditioned not to press after 1-2, we can attempt to go for a standing 4. The purpose of this is to catch the opponent who might be semi-patient. They won't immediately press buttons after 1-2, but they do delay the button press after seeing that 1-2 was not completed. Our opponent often knows that there are two main options, right? 1-2-1 and 1-2-3. When they don't see the follow-up, they will attempt to reclaim their pressure by pressing buttons. And this is where the standing four, better known as Magic Four, comes in. Just the slightest little bit of hesitation from the opponent after they register that a button was not pressed on our end after 1-2 is all the time we need for the Magic Four to counter hit. While the combo off of Magic 4 is very hard to do, it is extremely rewarding since this is Brian's fastest counter hit launcher coming out at 12 frames. Even if this attack is blocked, because the opponent did not press a button, we are still safe and will not be punished by any means. So this is a pretty fair and safe option to use. Next option, Forward 3. Depending how hesitant the opponent is to pressing buttons, forward 3 might actually be a better option. Uh, while Magic 4 is the fastest counter hit launcher that we have, forward 3 offers some other unique advantages. For starters, forward 3 is 0 on block to plus 2 on block, depending on range. Um, compared to Magic 4's minus 7 on block. So this option never places us in a frame disadvantage. Should we want to go for more pressure after we do a forward 3, we can still at least pull even on frames with the opponent. And in, you know, in the worst case scenario, we trade jabs with the opponent. So not a big deal. Second, the counter hit combo after forward 3 is significantly easier to land than the magic 4 combo. So ease of use is definitely a plus and something to keep in mind. And the last but not least, uh, forward 3 is 4 frames slower than magic 4, so this is an advantage. What? How, 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 is, it, uh, how is it an advantage you might ask? Um, let me explain. Think of this 1-2 mix-up as a timing mix-up. When our opponent sees that 1-2, but then nothing afterwards, they might press a button and get counter hit by, say, something like a Magic 4, right? So our opponent then is thinking, okay, 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 I know he's gonna go for Magic 4, and I also don't wanna get hit by something like 1-2-1, so I'll wait out both timings for 1-2-1 and 1-2 Magic 4. So then they wait, and then the magic 4 doesn't come out, but then lo and behold, 4-3 comes in. So being slightly slower than a magic 4, forward 3 changes up the timing and the options for our attacks. So by delaying our attack, we might bait our opponent further into another attack. Next up, back 1 and hatchet kick. So against super, super patient opponents who won't run into anything, um, this is how we upgrade our frames from say something like 1-2, which is minus two frames, to plus four frames, right? Because back one is plus four frames on block and hatchet kick is also plus four on hit. And if you've been doing your job and keeping your opponent standing because you've been doing plenty of mid attacks, like I said, uh, usually hatchet kick will land. They're not gonna just randomly duck for no reason if you've been mostly throwing out mids. Um, 
whether it's going to be a back one or a hatchet, both of these options are going to be big coconut size ball plays, right? If we know the opponent is not gonna press buttons after one, two, we can quickly attack on the pressure with one of these options, and it's one of Brian's better pressure tools. And needless to say, this also has the potential to counter hit the opponent since yet again, the timing has changed. The timing difference between magic four, uh, forward three, and say something like back one and, and hatchet, all of these are different timings. So in order for the opponent to adjust to it, they either have to respect it or they're going to have to mash and they could get hit by any of these options. Last but not least, standing one and one two. Now this is the most basic of the one two string pressure, but I put it here last because, well, it can be looped in in itself. What do I mean by this? As we all know, 1-2 is minus 2 on block, which isn't bad at all. But if the opponent hesitates even just a little bit on block, we can do a standing 1 jab, which takes our negative 2 frames and now puts us at plus 1 frame on block. From here, we can then go into another jab or go into the next option, which is 1-2 again. When we go for something like 1-2 into 1-2 again after connecting it on block, doing so is rather interesting because while the opponent avoided the initial mix-up because we did 1-2 and then finish it and go into 1-2 again, they're placed into the same exact situation, kind of a unfavorable three-way mix-up if you will. Will we as the Brian player go for an immediate mid with 1-2-1? where them ducking leads to us getting massive plus frames and damage and if they mash we get a counter hit which could lead to a juggle will we as the brian player then go for maybe say an immediate low which is one two three where standing for them leads to chip damage and plus frames for us and if they mash they also get counter hit with the three, which leads to a soccer kick. And the last option, you know, as the Brian player, will we go for a slower option where if they guess wrong on the timing, they could lead to an ill-advised counter hit for them. So this one, two into one, two kind of is um, your looping pressure in a sense. And of course, I realize that this can be ducked and launch punished, but again, sticking with mids for the majority of the game, you shouldn't really have a huge issue with the opponent just ducking you for no apparent reason, right? And now I want to say that this, what I've, what I've portrayed in all of this for the one-two pressure, it's by no means the full extent to which Brian can vary the options after one two, but it's it's a it's a good starting place, right? My goal here is not to just give you a, a flowchart method of applying counter hits, uh, but rather a guide to different options by applying pressure. You must not only pay attention to what you are doing as the Brian player, but also how the opponent is responding. As soon as you notice the opponent is adapting to your offense. Uh, and upgrading their defense, then you also need to change your offense. So overall, use 1-2 to scout out the opponent, then adjust as needed. And then scout again and continue to adapt. Oh boy. All right, so this is in my mind how the 1-2 string can be optimized to tack on pressure and to get an idea of how the opponent likes to play and you know I'm sure other players will have different ideas uh, or different thoughts on the matter but I just wanted to share maybe my play style and and my thoughts on the matter mostly because I see a lot of Brian players just using one two three and then either getting low parried or blocked and punished or using one two one at an inconvenient time and basically taking you know six frames and then just shipping it over to the opponent and saying here's your turn take it right 
This is why I wanted to do this guide, and I consider this more of an intermediate topic, mostly because it involves um, two things. It involves breaking some really bad habits with one, two, and, well, maybe three things. Also, so breaking habits, second thing is making note of what the opponent does and looking for specific responses. And three, which is adapting to what the opponent does. So um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this topic. I know on the surface it is super simple and super easy, but in all honesty, when you try to implement this stuff, it can be really hard because in the heat of the moment, you're just like, uh, uh, one, two, one, two, one, and then you just throw it out. Or, oh, I need that low damage, one, two, three, and then you get low parried. So thank you guys again for all the love and support and watching this video. I really, truly do appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed any of this com uh, content at all whatsoever, please don't hesitate to leave me a like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon. If you have any further questions, feel free to join my Discord. It's in the link below. And um, guys, it's been a pleasure for me to do this video. And I just want to make one last shout out to thank you all the patrons who did support this. This video has been made a lot simpler because of you, and of you guys, and thank you for your donations. So with that, let's roll the credits and let's get the hell out of here. Well, I'm Peter, and I'm signing out. Take care, guys. Have a good one.